NBC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. It was a very interesting election day. And while they say that all politics are local, the results of local and state elections across America yesterday enable us all to pick up some powerful vibrations about the national mood. President Bush and the Republican leadership cannot have missed the fact that Democrats have finally discovered an issue they can exploit successfully, the economy. It was the issue in the Pennsylvania Senate race. Harris Wolford, a college president who had never held elective office, defeated Richard Thornburg, who left Mr. Bush's cabinet to run for what he thought was a sure thing. Here's ABC's Jim Wooten. Off to Europe this morning, the president had a few words about yesterday's voting. Pennsylvania? Bad, he said. But all in all... We're very pleased. There was a lot of good news for the Republicans. As head man of the Republican tribe, this is his job, to accentuate the positive, and that's what he did. Because our man in Mississippi won big, New Jersey won tremendous, blew him away in Virginia, and so please just don't look at, at part of the glass, the part that is only, only uh, less than half full. He did not say half full, he said less than half full. In other words, Dick Thornburg's stunning defeat in Pennsylvania has scared the Dickens out of the White House, not only because the president actively campaigned for Thornburg, but also because Thornburg made the president a centerpiece of his campaign and lost badly to a Democratic underdog who blamed the president for Pennsylvania's economic distress and exploited national health care as a symbol of presidential disinterest. It is sending a message, a very strong one. We, uh built a bonfire here in Pennsylvania. We built, set up a fire that I think is going to be noticed. Even some Republican voters in Pennsylvania agreed and defected. I switched first time in my life to a Democrat because I really don't like the way things have been run recently in Washington. And Pennsylvania's Republican hierarchy meeting glumly today more or less concurred with the voters' take on Thornburg. We all thought he was going to sweep through. Well, I think Wofford was able to label him as a Washingtonian incumbent, yeah. and it was able to stick. But the president was pleased with a Republican victory in Mississippi. Businessman Kirk Fordyce beat Democratic Governor Ray Mabus with an anti-welfare campaign he said was not racial. And he was pleased with Republicans in New Jersey who swept the state legislature by campaigning against Democratic taxes. They can now do just about whatever they choose there. It's hard to get a handle on yesterday's message or messages, really. Both Democrats and Republicans were upset winners and underdog losers, and the only constant theme seems to have been an underlying hostility toward taxes and incumbents. And then, of course, there was that resounding shot across the president's bow in Pennsylvania. Jim Wooten, ABC News, Washington. Well, everywhere that politicians and their handlers gather today, the conversation goes pretty much the same way. Did the campaign commercials make a difference? What about the men and women who ran the campaign? Was there a key slogan that worked? What about this dissatisfaction with incumbents? As ABC's Koki Roberts reports from Washington tonight at both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue, the results have been taken as a wake-up call. While Democrats and Republicans stress different messages from yesterday's election, all of them agree the voters shouted one warning louder than any other. It's time for Washington to act on issues that voters care about. They're tired of Congress blaming the White House, of the White House blaming Congress. That frustration already seems to be spurring legislative action. Middle-income tax relief, which looked dead for this year, came back to life today. I'd be delighted to be able to get the bill out this year if we could. Uh, I think that uh, there's a very strong feeling that, that we have to accelerate the consideration of this. Even House Ways and Means Chairman Dan Rostenkowski, who's resisted a tax bill, now says he'll put a plan on the table tomorrow. Leaders promise unemployment insurance this year and a health care package next year. But those pledges will be hard to keep. For one thing, neither party has a plan. For another, even though voters called for action yesterday, they also made it clear they're not ready to pay for new programs. The message yesterday from my voters and across this country wasn't anti-Republican nor anti-Democratic. The message was anti-incumbent, anti-tax, and anti-big government. Until yesterday, those mixed messages from the electorate have meant paralysis. Now it's clear that inaction is politically unacceptable. 
So the politicians in Washington have to figure out how to do what the voters want without raising taxes or adding to the deficit. So far, neither the president nor the Congress has a clue how to do that. Cokie Roberts, ABC News, Capitol Hill. There are some other messages in yesterday's election. We'll have those stories in just a moment. Also on the broadcast tonight, the government calls for food labels that really tell you what's inside. And on the American agenda tonight, whether the burden of pollution is falling most heavily on minorities. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, brought to you by DuPont. Speculation that voters might express their anger at politicians in general by limiting the time they could stay in office where they had a chance. But in the state where this was most hotly debated, voters in Washington state, who turned out in large numbers, voted against term limitations. Washington voters also rejected a death with dignity proposition which would have legalized euthanasia. In San Francisco, voters have ordered the city to spend a certain amount of the city's budget only on programs for children. And in two states, victims' rights were on the ballot. In New Jersey, victims of crime or their next of kin will now have the right to be present at all court proceedings. In the past, lawyers could argue that a victim's presence was harmful to a defendant. And in Washington, D.C., voters overwhelmingly passed a law they hope will stop the killing. Here's ABC's Kathleen Delasky. It was an act of desperation, an attempt to make someone besides victimized families feel the pain of the city's violence. Those persons who are manufacturing these weapons will see beyond the symbolism uh, to the reality of their own economic loss. Under the law, gun dealers and manufacturers all over the country are liable for crimes committed in Washington, involving 14 types of semi-automatic pistols and rifles. It means that if someone buys this Colt rifle in this store and later uses the gun to hurt someone, then shop owner Rob Rautabush could be sued for damages. Yes, I do think it's ludicrous that uh, somebody would try to hold me responsible for somebody who's committing a crime that I have no control over, I have no way to stop them. But the ministers who led the campaign say they have found no other way to stop the killing. They prayed last night for the law's success. Now the ministers pray the law will hold up in court. The National Rifle Association plans to challenge it as unconstitutional. Lawyers are split on that question. The answer becomes even more important because four states are considering similar laws.